Welcome to devlog number 14 for a space game that my buddy Rich and I are making along with some collaboration and we are now slightly over three months into making this game. There's been a lot of questions about the overall design of the game, the scope of the game, who's it made for, how's it differentiate itself, and I thought this would be a really good opportunity to talk about the bigger picture of the game. Now that we're a little bit further into development and I can just show video examples of combat and spaceship flight and stuff it's a little bit easier to i think convey the overall image which i didn't spend too much time with in the initial announcement of making this game so we can get a bit further into the overall design goals and i want to start off by reiterating some of the first things that i mentioned at the beginning so firstly this game is inspired a lot by the classic top-down space adventure games such as Escape Velocity, which is something that I spent hundreds of hours playing when I was a kid. In those games, you would control a spaceship while you flew it around the galaxy, taking missions, docking at space stations and planets, earning credits, upgrading your ship, all that kind of stuff. You could actually argue that most modern space games really just retain all of those basic mechanics today, but usually in a bigger 3D package with extra features layered on top. But I personally feel like we've actually lost a little bit of the fun and accessibility that the classic formula brought to the whole space genre. So I wanted to revisit that classic formula, but layer in some of the modern additions that I like and evolve it in some new interesting ways, including using Unreal Engine 5 to bump up the visuals to a really nice quality for a 2.5D experience. So firstly, this game is being designed first and foremost as a single player experience. I won't rule out potential co-op options down the road, but as far as what we're looking at for a 1.0 launch of the game, multiplayer is not included in that vision. The overall game world is a sandbox, so you shouldn't be locked into just one single mission line progressing from one level to the next to the next until you beat the game. It should be relatively open world, but there will be a connective main quest tying everything together along with tons of side quests. Players will be able to use FTL drives to jump around their solar systems and jump gates to transition from one solar system to another, and there will be plenty of non-FTL type exploration and travel as well. Now when it comes to the lore of this world, the, the background story is that humanity has expanded well beyond their own solar system via wormholes that they find connecting massive gravitational bodies together. They found a super wormhole that actually connects the Milky Way galaxy to the Andromeda galaxy. And people have been going through that wormhole and colonizing the Andromeda galaxy for the first time ever. It's the first time humanity has ever been able to link up with another galaxy other than their own. However, sometime after millions of colonists have passed through this wormhole, the wormhole itself collapses mysteriously stranding essentially all those people in the Andromeda galaxy with no way to get back home and being completely cut off from all of their trade resources and everything else that they relied on. Because of all the chaos created, a power vacuum is formed and essentially two major factions come out of this vacuum, one fighting for the old ways of humanity and one fighting for some new ways of humanity that I won't get into the details of that just yet, but essentially a war begins. And playing as a freelance pilot, your story will start to wind around this conflict and eventually you'll be pulled into it more and more into pivotal combat roles. It doesn't mean that the whole game is going to be hyper combat military focused, but that will be a through line of the overall narrative. Now, as a player, you'll get to pick and choose from a variety of missions, from bounty hunting to search and rescue to cargo hauling and so on and so forth. Some of this will be integrated to the main quest line stuff. Some of it will just be job board style missions that you can run. Now, the game is going to play out on a two dimensional plane, even though it has 3D graphics. This, I think, kind of harkens back to the classic way of doing space sims and also I think we can do almost everything you can do in a 3D space game in a 2D space game if it's designed properly. I still want a lot of realistic flight controls and combat mechanics. Ships will drift through space realistically once thrust is applied and they'll be able to strafe in pretty much any direction with their RCS thrusters. 
hands-on controls is really important to me with this game. So there's not going to be any sort of point and click controls with the mouse like an RTS style game. It's all going to be movement based on thrusters. We're also designing the game to play well on controller and mouse and keyboard. I would like to eventually port it to consoles, but the first iteration of the game will be designed on PC. And if we can stick to it, I want to keep the Steam Deck as sort of our benchmarking prototype for what the game should be able to hopefully hit 60 FPS on. Again, we're very early, so we're still profiling a lot of things with the game, but that is my goal. Now, in the early game development, we've put a lot of time into fleshing out some of the combat systems. The Seawiz, aka close-in weapon systems, are going to be a major component of the game. They'll sort of act as a shield defense system. If you have ammo in your Seawiz, you should be able to shoot down incoming missiles. However, the defense system can be overwhelmed by saturating it with lots of missiles. Uh, it can be penetrated while it's being reloaded or if you target the Seawiz system specifically with other weapons take them out then essentially they won't have defense systems to get through. Missiles and countermeasure combat is going to be a major component of the game in addition to other projectile weapons like railguns and even some beam weapons that'll be a little bit further down the progression line. Now I don't want this game to play out like any old action RPG where you're say chewing through hundreds of enemies per mission. I want each combat encounter to feel a bit more serious and like you have to take it seriously even if the ship you're going up against is outclassed by your ship. I want them to still be able to do a lot of damage to you if you're not on your guard, if you make a silly mistake. They should be able to really deplete your health and ammunition and all that kind of stuff. I want to sort of employ some survival game type mechanics here. So scarcity of resources on a mission will be a thing, needing to loot ships that you destroy for ammo. Uh, fuel, repair resources. You'll probably run into situations where you could potentially take out an enemy very quickly if you send massive amounts of missiles at them, but then you won't have enough missiles to defeat the next guy you run into, so you'll have to run into lots of choices about how to defeat your enemies in an efficient manner. Now, I would love to go down a combat rabbit hole with this video, but I could probably talk 40 minutes on just some of the weapon ideas and combat mechanics alone, so I'll save some of that as a surprise as we start to roll it out in the game design. What I will say though is that I want combat to be very deep. I want there to be lots of weapon variety, lots of ship variety. I want small ships to be agile and have the ability to attack when it makes sense for them and escape quickly, where medium ships will get all kinds of intel tools and missiles at their disposal to try and outsmart their enemies. And large ships will have lots of brute force strength and timed damage mitigation tools. That's kind of how I'm thinking about breaking up the classes, but I also want lots of overlap between those. So not all battleships and not all cruisers and not all destroyers will perform the same as other ones. There'll be some hopefully interesting nuance there. Now the UI in this game is going to play an extra important role because there's going to be a lot of outside of your visible distance combat engagements, which you will fight within the PIP, the picture in picture. Locking on to enemy ships that are, say, five kilometers away and launching a missile salvo. You'll need a ton of information to see what projectiles are coming towards you, what projectiles are going out, how much damage you're doing to the enemy ships at range, what's the best way to counter them, are they countering you? All that kind of stuff is very experimental, and we have a lot of plans for how to flush it out, and I think it's going to require a lot of adaptive UI elements. Things fading out at the right time, things scaling down when you don't need them quite as much, camera systems that zoom in and zoom out very easily or maybe even automatically with movement and what's happening on screen. So we're gonna spend a lot of time with the UI and dialing it in because I don't think there's a lot of games that have tried to do exactly what we're doing with the PIP type combat. There will of course also be on-screen combat that will be reserved a little bit more for some of the close-in warfare and I would like the long range to close-in warfare to be kind of 50-50 in most situations and especially if you spec your ship more towards close-in weapon systems you might just be getting close up to your enemies more often than a ship that's designed to do more sniping or something like that. Now this game isn't just going to be a combat game. There's going to be tons of exploration, scanning, looting, trading, and even cargo hauling will be a key part of the gameplay loops. Of course it would be fun to add in some sort of asteroid mining at some point, but I'm going to actually leave that as a stretch goal for the game so that we just don't overload ourselves with too many features and have to cut back on scale or something to kind of hit our goals or deadlines. Now the physicality and visual 
visual representation in this game is really important to me. I want to see ships physically dock at stations, uh, at outposts, with derelict ships and disabled ships. If you're going to loot from a ship that you find, I want it to physically dock with it so that you see how the cargo is being transferred from one ship to another. When you find cargo drifting in space, I want the cargo doors on your ship to open up. I want the cargo pod to go inside the ship. I want you to see a good visual representation of everything that's happening. A stretch goal would be seeing cargo containers physically loaded onto your ship when you do some trading in port. That kind of stuff uh, means a lot to me and I think kind of goes a long way into selling the visual realism of this universe. Even though it is a 2D game, I think we can approach it with a, a realistic element. Now my plan is to only let you control a single ship. Many of these top-down space games are about fleet control, building up a massive fleet, having a small squadron of ships. This time I just want you to control a single ship, worry about your single ship. That said, I want there to be missions where you might team up with a group of AI and have to work with them. Maybe you could hire an AI escort uh, to help out with you. Those are kind of things that I'd like to reserve as stretch goal stuff. I also like the idea of you being able to own multiple ships and swap them out in your hangars and decide which ship suits the mission that you're taking uh, the best and experiment and see which what kind of combat you like. Do you enjoy being a battleship captain or do you like the speed and agility of a destroyer? I don't want people to feel too locked into a specific type of combat role and I want them to experiment and sort of gravitate toward what they enjoy the most. I'd like to put quite a few ships into the game. The ships themselves will have bespoke abilities. They'll have tons of module ports. You'll be able to swap out weapons and things to Customize the use of the ship to your liking. This could be upgrading turrets, swapping out the ammo types that you use, swapping out the missile types that you use, swapping in different upgrade modules. Some will be full on upgrades, some will be side grades, like say, exchanging cargo space for extra combat fuel or vice versa. We're also playing around with the idea of some light XP mechanics. I think for the most part, the game will be based on earning credits and buying new ships and upgrading those ships which will be sort of separate from the xp system but i do like the idea of having crew xp and there might be one or two other elements in the game that level up based on xp now as for world building i want each system to feel rich custom built and have a storied past to it you won't ever be landing on planets in this game so i want to make big space stations and cool asteroid bases and interesting mission givers that you can talk to and create a lot of depth and lore and characters that I think will be fun for the purpose of just crafting a universe that feels real and lived in. The main quest line will provide a lot of the game's story, but if you want even more background to the universe, side quests and exploration should reveal a lot more of the game's history going back thousands of years. Now, we haven't yet got to the part of development where we're testing out building larger solar systems. Currently, it's just small levels for testing out combat and visual styles and things like that. But once we get to building the larger systems, I would like players to be able to physically fly from one planet to another. This will allow us to increase the exploration of the game and give us fun missions where you might normally jump to jump markers or jump beacons, but say a station loses contact with another jump beacon and you get a mission that says, hey, go find out what happened. Now your mission is to travel a long distance and along the way you might run into pirates, get taken off course and go on some side quests or something like that. I think having a physicalized solar system like that is just going to lend itself to that kind of natural exploration and getting tied up in other kinds of missions and opportunities along the way. Now, as far as end game content goes, I'm actually really excited about some of the ideas I have, but I don't want to get into them just yet because they're heavily reliant on making a lot of these systems I've already talked about work and function so once we got more of the game functioning and you can see some actual missions run and they're fun and people are liking it then i might start talking about the end game evolution of that now i could spend hours and hours talking about each individual system of this game and how it's going to be designed we've got like 50 different design docs for all different aspects of the game at this point uh, we've gotten very deep into what we're going to do for the game, but I try to make this video sort of a consolidation of all the most important information 
give you a good general overview of it. I want to give a shout out to Discord members who are constantly asking questions about this game and giving suggestions and little things here and there. So I hope this video serves as a decent overview for the game. I, again, it's hard to get too specific into the details at this point because one, it's possible things will change. And two, I've got about 50 different design docs at this point that get into everything. So that video could potentially be like 10 hours long, depending on what I focus on and talk about. I tried to keep it kind of focused on all the aspects of the game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it gives you a good overview. And check out our Discord if you want to ask more questions on there. Um, I'm answering stuff all the time. People are suggesting good things on Discord uh, and influencing the game. It's been a blast. Really enjoying making this game. I hope you guys are enjoying these devlogs. As always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And if you missed the last devlog, check it out. It's pretty cool. We get deep into some of the new missile technology. I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.